Congrats to J. Michael Klein, the winner of last week's Hero You giveaway. Thanks to everybody who entered the contest, and hopefully I'll get a chance to do some more stuff like that in the future. Also, thanks to Nate, Doug, Time Space Dub, and Jay for suggesting today's episode, General Chaos for the Sega Genesis, developed by Game Refuge Incorporated and released by Electronic Arts back in 1994. It's a point-and-click real-time war strategy game, more like something you'd see on computer than on 16-bit console, but it has a hilarious setup that makes it unique enough to stand out from more standard and serious strategy games. Okay, so the backstory here is just great. These two brothers' parents somehow named them Chaos and Havoc. As the manual points out, a child named Chaos and another named Havoc are not likely to grow up to be tree huggers or flower sellers. No way, man. It's all about testosterone and blowing stuff up. Those are warriors' names. Chaos and Havoc are inseparable friends as kids who always like to play war games against each other, and they were always trying to acquire more books about war so they could read up on advanced combat tactics. The manual states one day Chaos came upon a written treasure more valuable than Napoleon's journals, Charlemagne's diary, or Frederick the Great's credit card carbons. <laughs> what? A mint condition copy of the number one edition of huge, muscular, destructive, heavily armed, frequently exploding combat warriors in battle. But when Havoc saw the comic book, he had to have it and the two fought over it. A fight that ended with the comic being torn in half. And thus, a blood feud between the two was born which escalated over the years as the two began to amass massive armies so they could fight against each other. And now, the game is centered around strategizing the war between the two opposing generals' armies. So this could be played with up to four players, either as teammates or going against each other using a four-player adapter for the Genesis console. If you play in one-player mode, you'll always play as General Chaos going against General Havoc, seeking revenge for the destruction of your prized comic. Like any strategy game, there's a lot to this, and you'll want to spend some time with the extensive manual so you have an idea of how things work. There's also a helpful bootcamp option which acts as a tutorial. That was thoughtful of them. It's standard now for sure, but most games from this era just threw you right into it without any explanation. I called this a real-time strategy war simulator, but that makes it sound like it's going to be overly sophisticated. Yeah, no. Battles are short-lived and quickly descend into frantic insanity in a matter of seconds. Each battle consists of five of General Chaos's soldiers versus five of General Havoc's soldiers, and there are five different types of soldiers. The gunner who comes equipped with a machine gun, the chucker who chucks grenades, the scorcher who has a flamethrower, the launcher, these guys have a powerful long-range bazooka, and the blaster. These guys toss sticks of dynamite everywhere. This ragtag group of misfits makes up the perfect outfit for a war, right? At the beginning of each battle, you can select from up to four pre-made combinations of soldiers. The Assault Team, which just has everybody, the Brute Force Squad, the Demolition Team, and you can also select a special commando group. This group only has two soldiers in it, alone, outnumbered, and loving every minute of it. Commandos are a little different, and we'll get to that in a bit. Once a battle starts, you're just thrown right into it, and everything descends into chaos within seconds. Pressing the A button will command all of your soldiers to fire. They'll just automatically aim at whoever's closest. You can press the C button to switch between which soldier you're controlling, as shown by the little highlighter underneath them, then move the little, it's sort of like a mouse cursor, just move it around the screen with the D-pad and press the B button to tell the soldier to move wherever you're pointing. Moving your soldiers around is critical, and you'll want to think about the range that each type of soldier has. For example, the Scorcher can do massive damage, but only if he's within 5 meters of an enemy. But the launcher who fires the bazooka can pretty much fire from anywhere, so you'll want to try to keep him away from the action to avoid him taking damage. If one of your soldiers gets injured and knocked down in battle, you can highlight them with the cursor and press A to send out a medic to revive him. You'll have to do this quickly though, as your downed soldier can still take damage and will eventually just crumble into dust and bones if he lays there long enough. You also only have a certain number of medics, but you can get more depending on how many points you get. You get points for just about everything, destroying certain objects that are related to each mission objective, such as taking out an enemy's water supply, and it's also possible to find plunder for extra points. At the end of each battle, you'll get a battle report that tallies up all the numbers. You win the battle by killing all the other soldiers. Whoever has the last soldier standing wins. There are also some stage hazards to watch out for too, such as these sandbags that enemies can hide behind, barbed wire, as well as bodies of water. And yes, it is possible to get exhausted and drown if one of your soldiers is in the water too long, so you'll need to keep them moving. I recommend experimenting with each type of squad, as it can make for an entirely different strategy and experience in the battles. Plus, I mean, it's just fun. 
Running in with a bunch of flamethrowers, grenades, and a bazooka, brute force and demolition squads were definitely my favorite. I mentioned the commando units, and those work a little bit differently. Instead of plotting their movements with the mouse cursor, you can just move them around manually using the D-pad. Press A to have them use their weapons. One has the machine gun and the other has a grenade. You can switch between them on the fly using C or press the B button to call the other commando to wherever you're standing. But the catch here is you only have two soldiers in this squad. However, being able to manually control them versus having to use the mouse cursor system does make for a different mentality, and I think if you were to spend some time with this and keep them constantly moving, you could do some serious damage. The other trade-off is with medics. If one commando goes down, the other has to run over to him to call the medic since there's no mouse cursor. And if one of your commandos is already dead, it's impossible for the remaining commando to call for a medic at all. This all sounds like it would be way more difficult in an already difficult game, but I do recommend trying it just to see what it's like. It's also possible for soldiers to engage in close combat during a battle. If they get too close, you'll see a Looney Tunes cloud of violence, and then it turns into Double Dragon for a minute. Pressing A punches, B kicks, and the C button will block. The rest of the soldiers on screen all stop to watch for a minute while you two duke it out, and each soldier's health is represented at the top of the screen. Keep punching and kicking until one of you goes down, and if you just try to use the same attack over and over again, the other guy will just pull out a gun and shoot you. Damn. So the goal of the game is to capture enemy territory, which is broken up into these sections on the map. If you capture enough territory to make your way to the enemy's capital city, then you win the game. But if you lose a battle and the enemy captures territory, they could eventually make their way to your capital city as well, thus causing you to lose the game. However, it is possible to keep playing if you just lose an individual battle. You can still win the campaign, you just might have to take the scenic route to get there. Play it out even if you lose a couple times just to see if you can battle back. I lost a few battles but was still able to win the war in one of my campaigns. Graphically, this game is nice to look at. The levels are all colorful and just look cool. All the soldiers are wacky looking and well detailed. Their animations are fairly well done too, considering you've got as many as 10 characters running around on screen doing different things all at once. There's some little cutscenes between the battles showing the generals preparing for the next battle. I don't know why, but for some reason I expected Captain Crunch to show up. Musically, there isn't much to talk about. There's some generic army battle type stuff that plays on the menu screens, but once the battles get going, you won't be able to hear it anyway over all the fighting and explosions. All of the digitized sound effects are solid and get the job done. I mentioned the difficulty and that seems to be the number one complaint about this game when I read some of the other reviews. Honestly, I wouldn't call it difficult so much as it's just really, really fast paced. You can make an argument that if you went into this expecting a turn-based strategy game and what you get is a fast paced bonkers over the top war game, you might be disenfranchised. The control scheme also doesn't really lend itself to this type of fast paced combat and you just have to really think quickly on your feet. Switching between characters quickly, moving them around based on their range and avoiding taking damage, calling medics, and also trying to grab some plunder and take out any specific mission objectives. All of this is done in rapid succession and you just have to get good. But I really enjoyed it, and if you take the time to study up on the manual as well as spend some time in the boot camp mode, which is super helpful, it's actually a rewarding experience. Seriously, oftentimes a battle would come down to just a couple of dudes left, and then you're haphazardly trying not to die long enough to get the win, and then when that happens, it's just awesome. My guess is that most of the negative reviews stem from not even bothering to read the manual or take the time to try the practice mode. Also, like I said at the beginning, this game could be played with up to four players, and that really would be where general chaos shines. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, I don't have any friends to play with, so I can't show any footage of that, but I just imagine a bunch of kids getting together on a Saturday night playing this thing on a non-stop loop while constantly taunting each other. I do also tend to think this game would better lend itself to having a mouse to control the cursor instead of trying to use the D-pad. It's awkward enough in console ports such as Shadowgate. And to that argument, I have some good news for fans of General Chaos. While I was in the process of working on this video and researching it, turns out the developers have been quietly working on an updated sequel. General Chaos 2, Sons of Chaos. 
It looks like this would be a PC, console, and mobile release, and I'm anxious to see how it turns out. The developers for this were also responsible for some other really cool games such as Rampage and Xenophobe. I'll put a link in the description so you can check this out and hopefully we'll get an update sometime soon on where they're at on the project. Well, what did you think of this game? Did you play General Chaos when it first came out or discover it more recently? What are some other games like this, if any, that you can think of? It's definitely its own thing, and I highly recommend checking it out if you've never played it before. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching. Please don't text and drive, and I'll see you next time on Friday Night Arcade.